Small Spaces, 5. Ben Withers Middle School always looks shabby, its paint peeling around the windows, its roof drooping in. But today, under the gray sky, the school looked sad and lonely. It lay curled up behind its fence like a huge stray dog. Ollie imagined that the building was actually a giant dog. It would come to life and be Ollie's friend and they would go on adventures. Her dad drove into the parking lot, bouncing over potholes. The car shuddered to a halt, and Ollie's daydream disappeared. She hunched in the passenger seat, one finger holding her place in her book. "'Can't you leave that with me?' asked her father, hopefully. "'You might try talking on the bus instead. Jenna misses you, and I know Coco Zintner wants to be your friend.' Something in Ollie's face silenced him. Jenna just wants to talk about how she feels bad for me. Still, I hate it. Coco's from the city and just silly. Ollie pointed to her book. I think Jonathan might have just sold his soul to the smiling man. Well, muttered her dad, it was worth a try. Ollie picked up her polka dot backpack and grabbed the door handle. Look, Ollie said her dad. She waited. Her dad sighed and changed whatever he'd been about to say. Okay, how about this one? What's the difference between a cat and a comma? Dad, well, I don't know what. Her dad grinned. A comma, he informed her, is a pause at the end of a clause. Ollie saw where this was going. Dad, but a cat, her dad finished blithely, has claws at the end of its paws. He busted up laughing and Ollie snorted despite herself. That was better than usual. She slouched out of the car. Oh, wait, I forgot. Here, said her dad. He reached into the back seat and thrust her lunchbox out the window. Ollie undid the clasp and peered into its depths. Carrot sticks and peanut butter cookies, way too many of them, and a very large turkey sandwich cut in quarters on homemade bread, maple granola with sugared walnuts, a chocolate chip muffin. Dad really must have baked all night. I'm too old to pack a lunch, Ollie said, but not very convincingly. The muffin looked fantastic. They'll have lunch at the farm, and I think someone is supposed to bring donuts to homeroom this morning. Pa, donuts, said her dad. That's not food. That's like anti-food. Ollie was fond of cake donuts. They're totally food. Come on, said her dad, abandoning that argument. Take it anyway. You never know. You might get hungry. Her dad was smiling, but his eyes were dark and a little sad. Please, Ollie, I made it for you. Come on. And so she took the lunch box and stuck it hastily into her backpack. Thanks, Dad, she said. Her lunchbox was pale blue with a pink unicorn on the front. She had loved it when she was younger. Her dad refused to hear her hints about switching to paper sacks. Love you, Ollie Pop, he called as she strode away, loud enough for the entire town, let alone the middle school, to hear. Ollie had her hand on the front door when she remembered that she had to go to the principal's office. Gah! Principal Snyder's office was down a long hallway. The hallways had green walls, not so nice a shade as Ollie's kitchen, and green and brown freckled linoleum. The office door had a large welcome sign on it, with a worm waving, with a worm waving from a hole in an apple. Ollie disliked this sign. One of her dad's jokes went, "What's worse than finding a worm in an apple?" finding half a worm in an apple. Ollie had found both worms and half worms in apples before. Most kids from Evansburg had. Thinking of apples, Ollie went in. The first person she saw was Brian Battersby, looking helpful and sincere. It was not an expression that sat naturally on his face, in Ollie's opinion. He spent too much time acting cool, 
The next person she saw was Principal Snyder looking frustrated. Now, Brian, she said, tell me again what happened. I tripped, said Brian cheerfully. Bad luck. Ollie stared at him. Was Brian covering for her? Ollie, said Principal Snyder, turning gravely to her. Um, yes, said Ollie. That's me, Ollie here, she waved. Did you throw a rock, said Principal Snyder, yesterday? Did you hit Brian with a rock outside the school building? Behind Principal Snyder, Brian shook his head at Ollie. Um, maybe, said Ollie, not sure how Brian wanted her to play this. I did a lot of things yesterday. I do most days, you know, with the school and the home and... Anyone could have done it, Brian put in. No harm, no foul. It cut you in the head, cried Principal Snyder. Accidentally, said Brian, and he added, with unexpected crispness, you can't pursue justice on my behalf if I don't choose to have it pursued. I'm the star witness. Ollie gaped at Brian, but hastily arranged her face to vigorous agreement when Principal Snyder looked her way. The principal rubbed her temples, looking from Ollie to Brian. I can't have students injuring other students, she said. Just an accident, said Brian. Besides, it probably wasn't her. If there was a rock, I definitely didn't see her throw it. Of course you didn't see her, said the principal. She hit you in the back of the head. Therefore, she was standing behind you. Neither of them said anything. Principal Snyder looked again from Ollie to Brian. Ollie thought of Coco Zintner and tried to look angelic. Maybe it worked. Abruptly, Principal Snyder's face softened. Sympathy face. Ollie almost let her innocent expression slip. She hated sympathy face. Well, it is chivalrous of you, Brian, said the principal. Ollie bristled implying that Brian was only sticking up for her. Why was he sticking up for her? Because she was a girl. That was dumb. Or worse, it was because Ollie was that girl. But she bit her tongue. Whatever Brian was doing, it was working. Make sure it doesn't happen again, said the principal, misty-eyed now. I'm so glad to see you making new friends, Ollie. Run along, you two. Ollie and Brian burst together out of Principal Snyder's office, and the second the door banged shut behind them, Ollie turned to Brian and said in a voice dripping with scorn, Chivalrous? Brian looked lofty. I didn't want to get a girl in trouble. You could say thanks, you know. I just got you out of detention until Christmas. First of all, I got myself in trouble, Ollie said. I don't need you to help me to get me in trouble, thank you very much, and don't treat me special because I'm a girl. That's sexist. Being nice to you is sexist? If you're being nice just because I'm a girl, it is. I didn't even say chivalrous. That was Principal Snyder. Besides, can we focus on the part where I got you out of detention? Brian had been looking proud of himself. Now he looked a little deflated. You could have just stuck up for Coco then I wouldn't have been in the principal's office in the first place. Where was your chivalry then? I couldn't stick up for Coco, said Brian in a reasonable tone. Then people might think I liked her back. They were hustling down the hall. The bell was about to ring. Who cares what people think? Ollie demanded. She was a little out of breath trying to walk faster than him. But Brian just glided along beside her, hands in his pocket, acting as though he weren't in a hurry to get to class at all. I care, said Brian. Where'd you even learn to talk like that, anyway? Star witness? Law and order, said Brian at once. My mom's a fan. You still haven't said thank you. Because I... Ollie began hotly, then stopped. Brian stopped, too, weirdly. Why didn't he say, have a nice day and go away? Worse, he was still talking. You know, Ollie, he said, that was a really good throw with the rock. He made a rock-throwing gesture. You were like 20 meters away. Brian was born in Jamaica. 
His parents had moved up to Evansburg to open a spa when he was a toddler. You wouldn't know where he was from by talking to him, except that sometimes he said iry instead of good or used meters instead of feet. Also, he was black, which was notable in a small Vermont town. Then it was just like wham! But Ollie had stopped listening. She had paused at a window and looked out at the old hickory tree and beyond it to the muddy soccer field. The rain hurried down, sleek and silver, the kind of rain that seems to gather mist as it falls and fill the air with water. It had been raining that day last January, a weird, unseasonably smoky rain, rain that washed away snow and iced up engines. It had been raining that day when her dad came to school, and just there under the tree he had said, Never mind, she said. The bell's about to ring. With that, she hurried off, leaving Brian puzzled behind her.